Hello everyone and welcome to the Starsea Dragon channel. This is our new perspective for the day and never mind my the sound of my shuffling. I'm pulling a card, an oracle card. While we talk though, these are our three cards today. Um, I pulled from the Mystic Mondays Tarot and of course I did, there's our card I guess, um, I did a review on I, I review all of my cards, so um, if this is a deck that interests you in any way, please go check out that review. I'd appreciate it. But here's our, um, I think I want to pull from the super, uh, from, uh, super attractor, super attractor. Okay, never mind, don't, don't pay attention to me. So today we got... The Fool, the Chariot, and the King of Swords. Interesting how we got two major arcana again. So the Fool, um, some say it's Aquarius energy. Some say it's Aries energy. I say it's um, energy. So here's the thing with the Fool. It's the first card in the major arcana, right? It's the beginning, Right, and the world is the end. And once you reach the world card, you um, not only reach the end, but you begin again with the fool. Right, that's why the fool is the zero and not the one. So um, the fool is about youthfulness, about seeing, being willing to see the world through new eyes, being willing. To, um, and being confident enough in yourself to be able to take the risk and go out on a limb and um, uh, take that chance, take that leap of faith, right? Um, I heard the other day, I don't know, it was, it might have been the toothpick hottie on TikTok because he comes up on my feed all the time. And, you know, he really is, he really is a handsome guy. But beside that, um, he, uh, he always starts off with morning, darling. And my soulmate will tell me, good morning, darling. You watch. It'll happen. Anyway, um, I remember him saying that a bird does not, a bird that lands on a tree branch does not worry about whether or not that tree branch will hold will hold him. He relies on his self-sufficiency and his wings to be able to carry him off um, should he, should the branch break, right? So it's not, it's not worrying about whether or not you're going to fail or succeed. It's whether or not you have the confidence within yourself the self-worth, the self-love to be able to have the confidence to take that leap of faith, to take that risk for yourself, right? Um, the chariot speaks of forward movement, moving away from, in the traditional tarot, the chariot is moving away from a city. And um, it explains, or yeah, it explains, you know, that that city, you know, he's outgrown it. He's, um, you know, moving on to learn bigger and better things, to grow within himself, to gain more knowledge, to move forward to, with his life or her life, um, to be able to grow and expand and the chariot never moves backward. Um, it's much like the allegory of the cave. I'm not going to blurt all of that off because if you haven't taken Western Civ in college or in high school, then you can Google um, the allegory of the cave. But basically, it speaks to um, once you've outgrown one way of being, you can't go back to that. Right, because you're you've expanded to the point where you 
no longer fit in that small cave, right? Um, once you've expanded out into the world, you can't go back to that tiny, small, meager existence, right? Because you've expanded your knowledge and your understanding and your emotions and your self-worth, right? Um, the King of Swords speaks to it, and the Swords is air element. I don't think that we've run into too many Swords just yet, but Swords speak to, they're an air element, which is logic, intelligence, um, mind over heart, right? It's a matter of the mind. Um, the negative aspect of that is, you know, you could be all up in your head, right? Um, there's a, a fear base within um, your mentality that sometimes can get the best of you, right? So that's the negative aspect of that. So the, the fool speaks of a taking a leap of faith. The chariot speaks of forward movement and growth. And the king of swords, he's in charge of, you know, his people, right? His um, kingdom. And he's in charge of the well-being of everyone in it. He's very fair-minded. He's very logical. He does not, he's not a bleeding heart. He doesn't think with his heart. He thinks with logic. He thinks, okay, well, what makes sense for the greater good? Um, he doesn't worry about, you know, um, the feelings of, of other people. He he thinks of the logic based on what is good for the, for the greater good. And... Um, what is logical and doable um, to make everyone comfortable, um, to make everybody be able to function in um, a non-chaotic manner, right? So, um, <coughs> there you have it. What is it in these cards? They're very bright colored cards. They're I like the, the amount of abstract, and yet there's so much use of color in these cards. But what is it that um, really sings to you? What is it that you're intuitively um, being uh, uh, kind of tapped on the shoulder with? Um, let me know in the comment section below. Um, this this speaks of, you know, keeping your wits about yourself, right? And growing um, and taking those leaps of faith, but knowing what you're getting into at the same time, right? Knowing that this is the right thing for you. And it's it makes sense to be able to do this, right? It makes sense to move forward, right? So let's see what we got for our card um, stand up for yourself, spotted skunk. Well, isn't that appropriate? Let me see what this is. What are we on uh, page 83? Okay, let me look in the book. I will read this. I think we've gotten this before. Stand up for yourself, spotted skunk. Well, spotted skunk may be known for causing a stink. Smelling up the room is really a last resort. First, she goes big, standing on her front legs, fanning her tail in the air, and stomping forward so she seems fierce and imposing. Skunk can make herself appear larger than her naturally diminutive stature, glamoring even the toughest customers into leaving her alone. Here's the thing. While Spotted Skunk doesn't back down, the harm she creates is pure illusion, right? Don't be all up in your head. Um, where did I go? <laughs> it's pure illusion. Sure, the unwary will be stinky for a stretch, but Skunk stands up for herself without causing permanent damage. Can you find a way to both stand up for yourself and do no harm? And the ritual is train your nose. We are constantly taking in scents in our daily lives, but it's 
only the strongest or most unusual smells that grab our attention. Spotted Skunk knows <coughs> that scent is a powerful tool for self-defense. To harness the power of scent, you have to train your nose first to notice scent and then to recognize it. Try this. Choose three to five essential oils to work with. You don't have to like the smell of them. Start by taking off the bottle caps and shuffling them around so you don't know which is which. Then use your nose to pick which cap goes with which bottle. Look at the name of oil only after you've matched cap to bottle. Do this a few days in a row so you begin to know the oils by scent as much as by name. Try to identify similarities between the scents. If two scents seem similar, reach or research them to see if you identify the component you're smelling. Both eucalyptus and lavender contain camphor, for example. Once you notice the similarity in scent, you'll be able to identify it in other places as well. Like learning a new language, scent may feel completely foreign in the beginning. Allow yourself to play and experiment as you develop this sense. Reflection. How do you handle conflict? Each of us has a style we revert to when we feel cornered. Some of us, like possum, play dead. Others will attack like grizzly. And there are those who will turn tail like rabbit. When it comes to handling conflict, Spotted Skunk is a profound teacher. Despite her diminutive stature, she doesn't back down, fluffing herself up to appear much larger than she is. Think of it as pulling an aura. This ability to feel energetically and spiritually bigger than your physical body. Tiny Spotted Skunk doesn't run from a fight. In fact, it's usually the big, bad predator who says, Sorry, ma'am, I confused you with someone else. I'll just be on my way. <laughs> Even when she causes a stink, Spotted Skunk doesn't cause permanent harm. Instead, she assaults the senses, convincing even Bear and Woof that they'd be happier if they left her alone. How do you handle conflict? Do your methods achieve your goals? What can you learn from Spotted Skunk? Isn't that interesting? And then we got a super attractor card and it says, instead of worrying about the future, I know all is well when I'm aligned in the moment. Taking that leap of faith, right? Well, aren't these lovely? Let me know what you think. What, what are you intuitively feeling? Now, remember, um, these new perspectives are not a tarot reading. They're not a general reading. The, this uh, new perspective is 100% meant to help others um, tune into their intuition and uh, kind of feel out the cards, figure out what it is that they're intuitively feeling about a combination of cards. It's an opportunity for us to discuss, um, you know, how we feel about the cards, what the meaning of these cards put together um, means to you as an individual, and start conversations with each other. We're here in this community to learn with one another and to learn from one another and to teach one another. So it's beneficial for all of us to interact with each other and um, help each other to tune into this. Because when you do your own daily readings, when you do your own um, spreads while you're practicing, it'll help you to tune into that intuition if you practice this on a regular basis. And what better way to practice this in a safe environment um, than with others who are doing the same, right? So let me know uh, what you are picking up in these cards 
and I'd love to have a conversation with you about it. And I'm sure everyone else in our community would love to talk with each other as well. So let's do that in the comment section below. Other than that, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video.